Hi guys, Miss Francis here. Today I would like to discuss neurons with you. We just finished up our unit about transport. We talked about passive transport, active transport. So how do organisms use all those different types of transport to maintain homeostasis? One of the ways that organisms use active transport is to send action potentials, known as signals, also called nerve impulses, um, down the axon of neurons. So the sodium potassium pump, which is a form of action transport, helps restore what's called the um, resting membrane potential, which is vital to send messages throughout our bodies. Another way organisms use transport to maintain homeostasis is with osmoregulation that happens in the kidney. We'll get to that in a little while. But let's talk about neurons some more and the role of the sodium potassium pump. What are neurons? Neurons basically, in essence, are just nerve cells where the sodium potassium pump restores what's called the resting membrane potential. That's um, where you have your cell that's got a positive charge on the outside, but a negative charge on the inside. That's membrane potential. Um, so after, <coughs> after a signal is sent, that resting mem membrane potential changes, and now the sodium potassium pump helps restore it back to that resting membrane potential. So let's take a look at the actual structures of a neuron. There's an error here. Do you guys see it? This is not a cell body. That is the nucleus of the cell. Now, believe it or not, this whole structure is one cell. It's one neuron where you've got dendrites that are going to receive the message from the other cells. That message then propagates, gets passed along, the axon, where that message is called the action potential, and it travels in one direction along the axon. Now, the axon got the axon has what's called a myelin sheath. The myelin sheath helps speed the neural impulses, and these little breaks in between the myelin sheath are called the nodes of Ranvier. Your myelin sheath is composed of Schwann cells. Now, once our um, message receives, I'm sorry, once, this, once the message gets to the terminal buttons, also known as the action axon branches, also known as the terminal branches, it needs to be passed along. So you're going to have the message via neurotransmitters pass through what's called the synapse and travel to the dendrites of the neighboring neuron. How that actually happens is something that we're going to address a little bit later. So if you were to draw a picture of a neuron and label all of the key parts, make sure that you can draw and label the dendrites, the axon, the terminal branches, the cell body, which is also called the cyton. You can also indicate where the uh, nucleus of the cell body is located, the myelin sheath, the nodes of Ranvier. Make sure you know the pathway of the action potential and where the sodium potassium pump is going to be found. So here you guys needed to label the different parts. One is your dendrite, three is your cyton, two is your nucleus, five is the axon. Um, this one here is going to be the myelin sheath, and lastly six is your terminal branches. So how does information flow through the neurons? Well, like I said, the dendrites are going to collect the signal, the cell body integrates the incoming signals and then generates an outgoing signal along the axon to the dendrites of another cell or to an effector cell. Um, next time that we meet, we're going to talk about exactly how that action potential or that signal occurs.